Worst thing that ever happened to a preacher is he becomes civilized. It's worthless. Worthless. One thing I noticed about Leonard Ravenhill, and I'd take a Leonard Ravenhill over 20 dead Calvinists. One thing I noticed about Leonard Ravenhill, he was dangerous. He was dangerous. Today it's considered sadistic if you say people have to take up their cross even. Don't tell young people about the cross, they'll be discouraged. Well, are you suggesting Jesus wasn't smart? If you're going to be my disciple, kiss the world goodbye. You see, when people are born again these days, they don't get separated from the world. Most likely their pastor is the most worldly guy there is around. I heard of a local preacher saying not too long ago, the story of, uh, of John is a fish story. Well, sure it is. It isn't about a donkey, is it? <laughs> but all he meant is something a bit fishy about it. That's what he meant. Which is not true. Because Jesus said, does he deny what the word of Jesus? A man that denies scripture should renounce his job and go sell hamburgers. He came in as a fundamental believer and he becomes a liberal, he should get out of the, the, out at the back door. <coughs> I'd fire him if I knew, had any power over that guy. Tell me, where is the man who can bring goes out on the lawn there every lunchtime and gathers 2,000 students around him. Come and sit around us for a year and listen. he called down the fire, he went back and he built the old altar. We don't want to go back to old altars, to old vows, to old commitments. We're always trying to make new things. God knows they'll be broken down anyhow in a few weeks.
What's the good of having all the machinery in the world if you've nothing to drive it? I don't care whether you've come on a, I'm going to say a skateboard or not, if you come on a, a Volkswagen tonight or a Rolls Royce. We're all dependent on one thing when we sit in the car. We turn the switch and if there is no spark there, you're finished. The car may be insured, it may be the cleanest car, it may be in wonderful condition, but it needs a spark to drive it. Well, look at all the equipment in the church. If the fire of the Holy Ghost really came upon the church today, we could shake the world in six months. Without a shadow of doubt. I get a bit hot about deacons and pastors always deploring the Bibles thrown out of the school. But I go in deacons' homes and never see the Bible brought out once all week. And some of you come from pastors' homes, and your daddy never took the Bible out every day and read it around the table anyhow, so why throw stones at the Russians or somebody else? Judgment must begin at the house of God. It begins, as the old song says, it's not my brother nor my sister, it's me, oh God, standing in the need. And the more I see men like that and realize all he did, I didn't ever have a Bible. All the heroes in Hebrews 11, not one of them ever had a Bible. And you and I have everything that God is ever going to say to the world. Boy, we're in for trouble at the end of the line. I like the hymn, I'll firm a foundation, remember that hymn? What more can he say than to you he has said? But here is a man who has had the veil of eternity lifted up. That's why he says in the, in the chapter that we read, in 2 Corinthians 5 there, The love of Christ constraineth me, why? Knowing the terror of the Lord. None of this sloppy, sentimental love business. God is a just God, a holy. God has a big But keep looking to Jesus and reading the Word and remembering these old paths that my daddy used to talk about so much. And